Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spin Cycle, the show for reviews of albums new and old. And today I'm going to be doing another episode of Versus. And today it's going to be Clash of Thrash, and that's Anthrax versus Testament. We're talking about the new albums released by Anthrax and Testament in 2016. When you talk about the greatest thrash metal bands of all time, there are two that almost always make that list, and those are Anthrax and Testament. And lo and behold, both of these legendary bands released new albums in 2016. Both bands have had some rough years with revolving door lineups, but they're back to thrash, and they're both awesome. It's one of the big four versus a band that should be one of the big four, in my opinion. So let's start off with Anthrax. For All Kings, which was released on February 26, 2016. The standard edition has 13 tracks, and it's their 11th studio album. There was a five-year gap between Worship Music and For All Kings. Worship Music came out in 2011. And since then, there have been some lineup changes. Rob Caggiano left the band to join Volbeat in 2013, and he was replaced by John Denace of Shadows Fall. The rest of the band is pretty much the same from some of Anthrax's best albums from the 1980s, including Among the Living and State of Euphoria, 1987 and 1988, respectively. And those band members are, of course, Joey Belladonna, Scott Ian, Frank Bello, and Charlie Benanti. For Testament, Brotherhood of the Snake was released on October 28, 2016. The standard edition has 10 tracks, and it's their 11th studio album as well. Here we have a four-year gap since their last album, Dark Roots of Earth, which came out in 2012, and this album, Brotherhood of the Snake. There was some shakeup in the band's lineup when bassist Greg Christian left again in 2014, and Steve DiGiorgio returned. And aside from drums and bass, Brotherhood of the Snake has the same lead members as Testament's best albums from the 1980s, which I would say are The New Order and Practice What You Preach, 1988 and 1989, respectively. And those members are, of course, Chuck Billy, Eric Peterson, and Alex Skolnick. All right, enough talk. Let's talk about the verses. For All Kings versus Brotherhood of the Snake. These are two legendary bands, and they're two similar situations, so ultimately, this has to come down to the music. Let's talk vocals. On Anthrax's side, Belladonna still has the range, and the songs certainly cater to his voice. There's a lot here for Belladonna to do, and you can absolutely tell that the music was shaped around giving him some opportunity to really belt it out. For Chuck Billy, he's definitely more in the Dark Roots of Earth than he is in the New Order type of sound to his voice, but he crushes every song. His voice is a lot more grainy than it used to be, but it certainly fits with the timbre of the music. On guitars, you can't go wrong with John Denace. His He certainly held his own in replacing Caggiano, fitting in nicely as Ian and Bellow's lead on guitar. For Testament, Peterson and Skolnick are two of the best dueling guitarists out there. I mean, right up there with Iron Maiden's Fearsome Threesome, and you definitely hear that throughout this album. On drums, you have Benanti definitely on point with his drumming. He is just a thrash metal master. For Testament, Gene Hoglan is certainly aggressive throughout the album, but sometimes it does sound like it's pretty much just the same old, same old thing over and over. Overall, For All Kings is more of a mixed bag of sounds with some classic thrash at times paired with more hard rock heavy metal themes. Brotherhood of the Snake is a full-on assault from start to finish, reminding us of some of the heavier periods of Testament's history and just how heavy thrash metal really can be. Some of the highlights from For All Kings, uh, This Battle Chose Us, just a great song. The title track, For All Kings, another great one. Blood Eagle Wings, that one is epically awesome. And then Evil Twin is probably the catchiest song on the album. For Brotherhood of the Snake, the title track, Brotherhood of the Snake, is just the best way to start off an album, is just hitting it hard from the get-go. Then you have some other great songs in Stronghold, another great thrash metal song, Neptune's Spear, and The Number Game is a great way to end the album. So who wins? Well, both bands are certainly channeling their 80s self with some 2016 flair and tone sprinkled in there. For All Kings starts off decently, but it picks up toward the late middle, so you do have to be patient with that album a little bit more. But it does showcase their talents without ever sounding overproduced or distorted. For the most part, it's rock, but every song has a thrash metal breakdown in it. On the other side, Brotherhood of the Snake kicks off with an aggressive, thrashing song, and it doesn't relent. The music is classic testament with more of the growling metal vocals of later albums, but it is consistent and hard, finishing with an exclamation point of a song in the number game. So who's the winner? Testament gets the crown for being a skull-crushingly fun album. Anthrax sounds a little too classic, whereas Brotherhood of the Snake is a little more modern thrash. 
I really was hoping it would be closer because I do love both of these albums, but Testament might have released one of my favorite albums of the year. For All Kings is still a great album for Anthrax in 2016, but Testament just hit the right note for me. Brotherhood of the Snake is definitely something I will come back to again and again for absolutely brutal thrash. So the winner goes to Testament, Brotherhood of the Snake. So now my top five for the week, some great 80s thrash songs. We're talking 80s thrash, so why not? First off, I Am The Law by Anthrax off of Among The Living. The Conjuring by Megadeth off of Peace Sells But Who's Buying. From Testament off The New Order, The Preacher is one of those just fantastic songs. Slayer off Rain and Blood, Angel of Death. That is almost one of the iconic songs to start off an album. But another iconic song to start off an album, Hit The Lights by Metallica off of Kill 'Em All. Absolutely one of my favorite songs. So what do you guys think? Who do you think should win? Anthrax or Testament? Tell me what you think of these albums. If you haven't heard them, you should definitely go out and hear them because they are both worth your time. And that does it for this episode of Spin Cycle, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Hey, gang. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what you see, you can click to subscribe to check out my other videos right here on YouTube. Or you can click the link to check out my website to find out about all of my other projects, including my podcasts, as well as my books. So what do you say? Click away.